event-driven languages build on top of the other types of programming languages. All event-driven languages are procedural. Most of them are object-orientated. So this is like a step beyond. What happened was that Microsoft discovered you could create a graphical user interface, what we call Windows. You had a mouse and you could point at things and click. And that needed a different type of programming language. Because instead of starting in one place and working its way through, the user might click on anything. They might click on the bold button, they might move a slider, they might decide on an option that they want. Whenever one of these things happens, it creates an event, a something that's happened. And you needed a programming language that could cope with that. So Microsoft created Visual Basic in about 1991. Now there are two types of events. The first type of event is where the user does something, so the clicking of a button or moving something. The second type of event is when the program does something, a system event. So when, for example, a new form loads, or when the application closes, these are also events that can be programmed separately. Now this is wonderful for creating event-driven programs that work in graphical user interfaces. But, as always, there's a downside. And the downside is that these languages are relatively slow. You have to do things in a particular way, and the program has to check every possible event all the time. So has the user clicked on something? Has the system done something? And it has to look through this list of all the possible events all the time. So if you wanted, say, a computer game that had moving graphics all over the place, then an event-driven language is not necessarily the best. You need a language that's more procedural in nature. Visual Basic, as I said, is an event-driven language, and JavaScript has also become an event-driven language. So let's have a look at this in a little more detail. Here is a very simple screen. It's got a label in the middle that says Hello Andy. That label will have a name. And it's got two buttons, a Show and an Exit button. And again, each of these will have names. However, the user can only click on the show or exit buttons. Clicking on the label would obviously have no effect. Or they could close the application down by using the little red cross in the far right hand corner. Either way, the program needs to look for some events. So how are these programmed? Here you see the code that lies behind this form. There's a procedure at the top called load that does something. And then there's an exit click procedure that does something if the user clicks the exit button. And finally there's a button show click that does something else when the user clicks that button. In each case it's looking for a particular event and we're programming each of those events separately.